Buckshot Roulette is a game that is incredibly popular at the moment, and more importantly, it is incredibly popular within the metro area of Grand Junction, Montrose, Colorado. Extremely important demographic for the YouTube community. My background is in data science and kind of statistics and all that fun stuff. So I immediately look at this game and I'm thinking, huh, you could do a statistics about this. Because ultimately it's a pretty simple situation. You've got X number of live bullets and N bullets total in the shotgun. Figure out who you're going to shoot, the opponent or yourself. I and mean, there's some interesting dynamics, uh, especially when you get to the items. So I sat down about two weeks ago and I was like, hey, let me solve this game. And let's be clear right off the bat, this is absolutely not in the spirit of the game. The spirit of the game is to gamble your life away. But this is more fun for me. So I went ahead, I opened Overleaf, and I wrote a bunch of math. And I say wrote a bunch of math, what I did is that I plugged it into this little program, I made a chat GPT, and then I got a bunch of expected value equations that I can make use of and in some degree comprehend because I took statistics class two years ago. With that said, let's get a little bit of nomenclature out of the way. Player zero is the player that you play as in the game, right? You are fighting against the dealer. You get the first shot every time that the shotgun is reloaded. And player one is the dealer. Why is it zero index? Because it was easier to implement. And then I kind of just stuck with it. X is the amount of live bullets. N is the total amount of bullets. Now we can go back here. We can see how this works. The expected value of just shooting the gun, X over N. Very simple, right? Don't worry about the variance equations. They're all nonsense. By which I mean they're completely valid, but they're just not comprehensible. This paper has some very interesting hits, like the value of shooting yourself. Turns out it's always negative or zero. We also look at the effects of the magnifying glass as the handcuffs, the beer. But the really interesting stuff comes when you come to the interactions, because now we are looking at combining items. So we're looking at combining the magnifying glass and the handcuffs. And I had to develop a whole process here. That's actually why this exists, by the way in order to determine the expected value in these more complex situations. Some of you who know about statistics might be looking at this and saying, hey, this is a hypergeometric distribution. You're correct. However, it's only really useful for the handcuffs because that's the only case where we're you know, taking two without replacements. When we're looking at these combinations, then it still gets complicated um, because we now have to figure out how the magnifying glass plays into the strategy. So if I see a blank round in the first shot, I'm not going to use the handcuffs. I want to skip and then use the handcuffs. And we're not able to account for that in hypergeometric. So that's all this. But here's the issue. I can only think of so many ways to combine items. And I'm not going to waste my time calculating out the effect of using three beers. So we move on to the next stage of this project. The recursive expected value engine. And I say engine that's very generous. It is just a recursive function. Um, and what this does is pretty simple. It's doing the same equations that I just defined, but it's doing it in a recursive manner. And it's doing it such that it makes very few assumptions. Aside from the fact that we will shoot at the end, because suicide always has a negative expected value. I did my best to define very few hard set rules here. You can see here, like with handcuffs, the base condition we say is just, hey, n has to be greater than 2. That's about it. And in doing so, we can write some pretty simple looking code that actually behaves in very advanced ways. Uh, hey, welcome to recursion, right? And this works pretty well on its own. But the issue is that with this approach, we will always use the items as soon as possible. Reason being that we are always trying to maximize our expected value for the current right now term. We're not thinking ahead. This is where we get to the second part of this project, which is the comparative engine which basically takes that and says, okay, what's the value of this action compared to not doing anything at all and just shooting the enemy? And then we also take into account the value of the items that we have um, with comparison to how many of that item we have. So we're implementing a, an idea of scarcity. And this is really what our final engine looks like. We do have a couple of hard set rules here. Um, you know, if X is equal to N, we will always shoot, meaning that if the shotgun is only loaded with live rounds, we will shoot the enemy. Similarly, um, if we know what round is in the chamber, then we're going to act accordingly. Uh, if we have cigarettes and our health is below the max, we're always going to use them. These are like, you know, basic uh, common sense rules. So actually, there's an interesting thing here where we might not actually want to have these hard set rules at the bottom because, hey, you never know. 
if we have all live rounds, we might be able to take advantage of that in a better way. Regardless, this is the engine that we have for now. And we are now tasked with figuring out how to evaluate these models, because we've got three. We have what I just described to you, this engine based on statistics. We've got the dealer engine, which mimics the behaviors of the dealer AI. And I based this off of the decompiled code by this person, the cat on the ceiling. And then finally, we have the random engine, which just picks a random move. So we have to do a comparison of these. So I initially started with this absolutely garbage website that I set up that is able to represent the entire game state and allows me to play against these models and they make their moves against me and it's a good time. The issue is that we have, I mean, you want to talk about randomized trials, we, our N is zero. Or sorry, our N is maybe 10 at most. I'm not going to sit here and play hundreds of games. However, the computer has no such problems. So what I did is I pitted the computer against itself at 300,000 games four times. What we do is that we set up a game where each side has one life. And then we have it run 10,000 iterations of that game to figure out the win rate of a target model and an opponent model. So in this case, we're pitting the random engine against itself. And we repeat this process for one life, two lives, three lives, four lives, all the way down to 30 lives. Now, realistically, not even realistically, this is just the limit of the game. You're not gonna get past, you know, five or six lives, but this helps us understand how these models behave in advanced situations when they're given enough time to think. In this case, we're really just looking at this percentage. This is the average difference of win rates between player zero and player one. So we see that playing as player zero gives you a flat 5% on average advantage. Now when we get to the dealer engine, we are now pitting the dealer against the random engine. You can see what I'm talking about with giving the models time to think. Because, yeah, by five lives, we have a pretty decent win rate. But we really see how effective this model is as it gets to these higher theoretical amount of lives. And that shows us that, hey, there is something here. There is some degree of intelligence that is able to work better given more time. And then we see this push to an extreme when we use the stat engine. Because now, even by the time we're at five lives, we have a win rate of 98.72% which is kind of insane. But the really interesting part of this comes when we pit the stat engine against the dealer. And now we have a much more complicated kind of uh, line here. We can see that when we are playing as the dealer, we actually have a pretty bad win rate, even within the bounds of what the game allows for. We're looking at 60%, which is still above 50, but not by much. Compare that to when we are playing as the player zero, where we're looking at an 85, 84, 86% win rate in real life kind of scenarios. But we see that we're actually getting outsmarted by the dealer over time, which is very interesting because the dealer is actually pretty dumb. You've probably seen examples of it yourself. In the back end, the dealer uses its items and then it picks randomly whether it'll shoot you or itself. So what really this boils down to is that our model is missing some core situation in which it should be acting differently and is not but the dealer is able to act differently because it's entirely random. And this is why our percentage slowly starts to decrease as these situations come up more and more often. And that's kind of where this ends because I had to end the infinite regression of, oh, hey, I can make this even cooler. I can make it even cooler. I need to get this video out someday and I want to be alive by the time that day comes. So this is where the model is right now. This is all public. You want to mess with it, you can. Honestly, I'm, look I'm complaining about 80% win rates. This is still like incredible let's be clear here right this is a strategy that will work 80 percent of the time maybe more in practice if you're you know using a little bit of human intelligence in the mix as well the next step here and what's probably going to be another video and i'm going to make it a whole cool thing is going to be talking about how we can account for the opponent's actions in this scenario one big problem here might be hey yes shooting myself is bad but if the opponent has a saw and i don't it is worse if i let the opponent use that saw so I might as well do this. So there's situations like that where you really have to account for the opponents, which are currently not happening. So that's going to be the next kind of target. Uh, and I'm sure I'll improve this uh, whole thing significantly by that point because I cannot help it. If you thought this was interesting, 
uh, leave me a like, give me some engagement, and yeah.